What's up guys, it's Unders. In today's video, what I'm gonna do is show you three ways that we can basically take a pretty dull sounding piano, you know, the standard stock piano sound you have in Logic and get it to feel a lot more natural and realistic sounding just to generally get better MIDI pianos. Take it from sounding like this to sounding like this. And then when your music is ready and you're able to release it, well, today's channel sponsor will be able to help you out with that. And a big thanks to the channel sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid is a music distribution service and the best way to get your music out to all of the modern streaming services fast, efficiently, and within an independent artist's budget. Check out the description below for a discount today. So DistroKid is who I personally use to release all of my music. But let's dive into the tutorial and get into Logic and make some better sounding MIDI piano. Let's go. All right, so in this project, I've got three different pianos. I've just named them Bad, Nicer, and Better. They're all the default Steinway Grand Piano from Logic, which you can just load up by going into your browser, choosing piano, grabbing the Steinway here. When people first start producing music and you end up just kind of like clicking and putting your piano notes in, uh, you'll end up probably with something like this. Piano sounds in Logic are actually pretty damn good by default. However, it just sounds bland and lifeless, right? Even though it's a really nice progression. And even though we've got this really complex bit of piano playing, some really nice chords and melody going together, it just doesn't pop in any way whatsoever. And that's a couple of reasons for that, right? When we look at this, um, all the notes are exactly the same green. Now, Logic gives you a measure of velocity with the color of the notes, but we can also see the exact velocity. I'm just going over to here and we can just look here. There, there's a slight velocity change, but they're pretty much all hitting at exactly the same area. The first thing we're going to talk about that is ever so important when you're working with MIDI piano is the velocity of notes. Honestly, velocity is pretty much everything in getting a good sound. Let's move on to the one that we've called Nicer. Great, so with Nicer, what, as you can see here, when we have a look at the velocity, they move around hell of a lot more. Now, this is the only thing that has changed, but listen to how different the piano feels. So there's a lot more difference in the feel movement of the piano. So that's part one. Now let's have a look at what we can do with velocity. Great general rule, if we take this first large chord here, we can see that it's spread across and the lower note is actually kind of right in the middle here. This note is right at the bottom. And these three kind of occupy that higher range, that triad. That doesn't always have to be the case. So if we take this chord here, for example, the lower note up in the middle, higher note, and then our actual middle of the triads, the most quiet note. But the whole chord is played louder than the first one. And that straight away gives us a different feel. It allows that chord to be kind of like an accent into what's going on. And you can see that when it's been played out here, they, they kind of alternate. We have a quiet chord, louder chord, quiet chord, louder chord, and that helps give an, another rhythm and feel into the music as well. So honestly, velocity pretty much everything is if we've got good velocity we're going to have a good feeling piano the next two tips just help it feel alive and so much more versatile and different so let's check those out so let's just compare nicer to better now i'll play the section here with the melody over i'll let the whole bit play through and then we'll switch to the better version
Okay, so hopefully you can hear night and day difference. Now, there's only two things that are changing. We're changing some sustain, and then we're also adding some reverb and feel of a room. Those are the only two additions after those velocity changes. And let me show you how they work out. So let's just go back to the better one and we'll grab the MIDI for it. So the first thing is something called sustain. Now, when we press a chord on a piano, like so, when that chord finishes, all of the notes have something called a sustain and a release period. And that's how long it takes those notes to come to zero. Now, we're at quite a slow pace here. So it's likely that these notes here, they might have finished releasing by the time the next chord plays. However, a longer note that might extend to here, for example, would still have a release into this chord. Then this is when you get clashes in the sound. For example, it, if we go back to the bad version, the chords will start to cross and blend into each other and notes that shouldn't be played together won't sound right. And you start to get that dissonance, you can hear it. So what sustain does is allows us to control exactly that. If we go back over to here and we go down to where we found our note velocity before, but we go to instead sustain, we can see that we can just tell that sustain to instantly stop when a chord is next about to play. It doesn't allow the sustain to come back in until shortly after. This stops any of that overlapping from happening of different notes when a new chord comes in. So you don't get that dissonant, well, clash of sounds effectively. Now you might notice that it's either 127 or zero. The reason for this being sustain is an on or off control, nothing more. So we instantly tell it to stop and then we allow it to return. It's as simple as that. However, if we were to make a mistake and have this one be, say, up here ever so slightly, even though it's very low, it'll still be on. There's only an on or off option. We need to make sure they're at zero or, or up at 127. It's an easy visual guide. Now, the only other thing that's been added to this is a bit of reverb. So we've got bus five set up here and it's just going over to Chroma Verb. So let's just bring up the mixer by pressing X and we've just got this here. If we take it away, It's quite dry again. And the reverb there just helps it fill out its space. And again, we're just using stock sounds here. Something else that's also on here is a tape delay. That's default in the preset. It was disabled on the nicer one. We can use the bus just to control the send amount. Having it set to zero, for example, can be a little bit too much. However, pushing it to zero and dialing it back to where it sounds nice, it's usually a good guide. So let's now just compare in context of the track, bad or the nicer and the better. We'll work from the melody section. And there you have it guys, those are the three things to look at when you're working with MIDI piano to get them to feel way nicer and way more realistic. First, look at your velocity and make sure you've got a nice spread on the velocity and you can add extra dynamic feel by alternating the chord volumes overall and having the spread of how they naturally be played. Also allow your melody to move in and up, move up and down in velocity as well. Next, look at sustain. 
can sustain control so that when chords are going to overlap or notes that might overlap into other chords are controlled and you don't get those dissonant sounds as too many release notes combine. It's going to be especially important if you've got very quick and rapid chord changes. And lastly, reverb. Putting the fake piano sound essentially in a room of its own gives it a whole new life and breath as you can hear in the example here. Hope that video has been helpful for you guys and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.